The next is about licensing. Here we can see some room system and desktop license, registration license, rich media session license, uh, which we talked about. And then there is turn relay license. We will talk about each now uh, separately. So endpoints can register to any of the peer in the cluster. If they lose the connection to their initial peer, they can then re-register to another peer in the cluster. So like in the case of CUCM also, we have an option to configure primary, secondary, tertiary servers. With those can be either all subscribers or maybe two subscribers, one publisher like that. Uh, and usually as a best practice, we keep a publisher always as a, the, the last preferred node and not the primary. Primary should be primary or even secondary should be the subscriber. Same is the case here. So uh, they automatically re-register to other peers if the first one goes down in, with, the, with the help of the uh, configuration that we have for redundancy. Yeah. So the capacity license is carried out on a per cluster basis. Any capacity license that has been installed on a cluster peer are available for use by any peer within the cluster. So for clustering, we need the license for clustering. And if cluster peer becomes unavailable, the license capacity is then installed on the other peer uh, which are remaining uh, in the rest of the cluster. And by default, there's a time for this uh, until you fix the one which is down, which is two weeks. And after that, if you do not, then it will lost, uh, it will lose that capacity for that one peer. So then that is the default time just as an information. So this license will remain uh, will remain there available for all the peers in the cluster for that two weeks here. And this license will then have the overall license capacity for the cluster. And each peer is always limited by its physical capacity. So the borrowing of license capacity is only intended uh, is used to provide the time to repair the cluster. So that is about the uh, exchange of the licensing and the capacity between the peers. So uh, these are the different licenses that are supported in a cluster. That is room system, desktop system, registration licensing. We have RMS license and turn relay license. The room system and desktop, uh, these licenses are required for all devices that are registered to Expressway. Uh, here is Expressway C we are talking about. So devices that consume a registration license will not consume an RMS when they are in a call with other Cisco registered license or Cisco infrastructure product, for example, meeting server or calls in collaboration cloud. So like we discussed in the case of RMS, that would be required only in for business to business calls. So these are required for concurrent calls to any endpoint or application that is not registered to the call control, uh, maybe the CUCM or the expressway within your enterprise. So for example, for calls from business to business or Jabber clients, uh, Jabber guests, or calls to other third party like Skype for business servers. Turn relay license are required to enable expressway turn, which is called traversal using relay network address translation. So we discussed two of the main functionality of expressway, that is firewall traversal and NAT traversal. So when we have to do a NAT traversal, then we need a, a turn relay license. So let's suppose you have NAT configured and you need to do a NAT traversal also for your uh, mobile and remote users, then a NAT traversal license would be required. That is called turn relay license. So turn stands for traversal using relay network address translation. Traversal using NAT relay license. So it's just uh, it's used as a proxy for the NAT server. But, uh, then to apply these licenses, you have to activate PAC, that is called a product activation key that you receive in the product license registration portal after you purchase it. So two type of keys are there, release key and option keys. These are the two keys we install once we have the licenses done. This is the next step we do. So release keys uh, are used once per Expressway device and is generated when you uh, register your Expressway serial number on the product license registration portal. We will see where we can find it. Then uh, there are option keys. These keys are like for any additional functions when we want to add. So in a licensed Expressway, you can go ahead and add more option keys. 
uh, that can give you advanced networking turn ports if you want to add or expressway e uh, integration and room and desktop license or interworking for all those options to add we can have option keys added within the expressway series for all these capabilities once you have entered the release key in your expressway system you can enter all option keys also at the same time or maybe later on also uh, so you have to go to a product license registration portal for that you can activate the uh, pack from there for uh, and with option keys, you can use those keys and inside the pack, you will see the product ID, which are called PIDs that you order. During the license activation, uh, you can select the features, PIDs that you need to uh, have on the Expressway device. Then you can assign the features to your Expressway device by just providing these uh, serial numbers in the Expressway once you get the option keys and you can activate them on Expressway. 